Perseverance has arrived at a location scouted by Ingenuity that has a fortuitous fracture pattern resembling a giant letter K. It's part of an intensely fractured landscape with a geologic story that scientists are trying to read on this episode of Mars Guy. Back in October, Ingenuity made its third longest flight up to that point, covering 579 meters, or about 1,900 feet, across a landscape that looks like shattered pottery. As has been the norm in previous flights, it landed among a patch of sand ripples, which proved to be safer terrain for a half-meter tall helicopter than landing on the rocks, pun intended. This path scouted by Ingenuity more than two months ago is now the one Perseverance is following in terrain known as the Margin Carbonate Unit. It's a place long recognized from orbital observations to be rich in carbonate minerals, the ones that form from CO2 in the atmosphere or in volcanic gases. The carbonates are in rocks along the inner rim of Jezero Crater that could have been a beach when a lake filled the crater billions of years ago. This possible watery history makes it a compelling place to search for any evidence of long dead microbes that might have inhabited the lake if Mars ever had life. Perseverance ended its 207 meter drive at a location that happened to be one that Ingenuity imaged with its color camera while flying sideways relative to the camera orientation. Here's Mars Guy for scale. The K-shaped fracture pattern that's so prominent from the air is unrecognizable on the ground. There's a hint of concentric curves in these rocks similar to the more fully formed versions in another location in the margin carbonate unit explored by Perseverance. Here they caused a bit of a buzz for the resemblance to structures known as microbialites, which form on beaches through a combination of biology and geology. But no biology is needed in the process of spheroidal weathering, which is the most likely explanation for the Martian features. See episode 131. Still, the origin of the rocks in this terrain is unclear. Two core samples have been taken so far, and they've been classified as sedimentary rocks. But they certainly aren't the kind of sedimentary rocks formed on a beach. Here's a spot created with the abrading bit on the rover's drill to get a better look at the texture. It shows fine grains that are notably irregularly shaped and angular, nothing like the much coarser grains typical of beach rock or the rounded grains typical of beach sand. But these grains could be ash from explosive volcanic eruptions. Any volcanic particle less than two millimeters is ash which applies here. And these particles could have been deposited and turned into rock well before the lake was ever present, with the carbonate minerals forming later, along a beach after the lake came in. If these are volcanic ash deposits, then the fractures are consistent with volcanic rocks known as ignimbrites or tufts, like this example from my home state of Arizona. They form from ground-hugging flows of nearly molten ash. After the flows come to rest, they cool and contract, producing fractures known as cooling joints. So the Mars K is not actually special, but it could be telling us something about the origin of the rocks along the margin of Jezero Crater. <laughs> 